Let's talk about 10 tips and tricks for EverQuest 2 that'll save you headaches and make you a much better player. Number one, what are the best trade skills? So I have the 24 classes explained video, but there's a whole nother aspect to EQ2, which is trade skilling. Nine trade skill classes to be exact, and you can get to max level in them without even touching combat. But you can only pick one class per character, so which one should you do? The most valuable trade skillers are provisioners and the three spellcrafters. Provisioners make food and drink that everyone can use. They significantly reduce your downtime between fights, and it can also provide some bonus stats. Lower quality food generally lasts about 45 minutes, whereas the best food lasts for five hours. And the other valuable trade skills are the three spell crafters. So when you level up, you get new abilities by default, but they're the lowest rank and power called journeymen. You can upgrade them in two ways. So monsters will randomly drop higher ranks, and people often sell them on the player broker, but you might not be able to find them at all on the broker or they'll just be too expensive. So that's where the crafters come in. They can cheaply craft higher ranks if they have the recipe and the ingredients. Alchemists make fighter abilities, jewelers make scout abilities, and sages make both priest and mage abilities. If you're trying to decide what trade skill to pick for your first character, I would go with provisioner if you're just casual, or the Spellcrafter for your class archetype if you want to raid. And that leads us to tip number two. You have to use debuffs or you'll struggle. I also touched on this in the Classes Explained video. Several classes can lower the stats on monsters, and these can increase the amount of damage a monster takes or lower the amount of damage a monster does. Debuffs are so important that there are many raid encounters that cannot be done without them. For instance, if you don't lower the strength stat on many raid bosses, they will one-shot the tank every time. You cannot heal that. With debuffs, the tank can take three to four hits. That can be healed, and it's a huge difference. Debuffs are not as important in groups, but it makes healing a lot easier. It's like getting hit by a rock versus getting hit by a rubber band. If you do plan to raid, this is where those spellcrafter trade skills are important. In general, guilds require you to have at minimum all expert level abilities, doubly so on your core group buffs and debuffs. A journeyman tank buff versus expert level buff can double the health pool. A journeyman debuff versus an expert level can cut a mob's damage in half. It's that important. Tip three. This is a way to get free crafting items and rares. Overseer. What the heck is Overseer? It's a mini game that got added in both EverQuest 1 and 2 that runs in the background. EQ1 Overseer gives you experience as a reward. It can counteract the experience you lose from dying. Yeah, EQ1 has experience loss and death. But in EQ2, there's no such thing that you cannot de-level. So instead, it gives you trade skill components and collection items. You'll need these components and rares for your crafters, and the collection items can be turned in to give you some really nice experience once completed. Tip four, the add-on that everyone should have, EQ2 maps. The in-game map by default is not helpful. Many zones don't even have maps. This is especially bad in dungeons. A lot of the most important quests make you go to dungeons and you will be completely lost without a map. So EQ2 maps solves that. It also gives you markers where certain named and quest steps are. If EQ2 maps is not enough to show you where to go, the EQ2 wiki can give you waypoints to copy. You just paste it in game and it'll give you a trail to follow to the objective. Tip five. If you're confused how to set up your character, the EQ2 wire site can help you. You can search up any character and find all their stats and info, but the most useful part is it shows their alternate advancement builds. So everybody uses this to set up their own characters. You find, say, a max level paladin from the top guild on your server, look at their AA setup, and just copy it on your own paladin. And you can even do this when you're level one. 
So you can preset where you want your AA points to go before you even have them. So you don't need to figure out how you want to build your character on the fly. It'll just do it for you. And another thing to mention is that EQ2 lets you change your AA builds anytime you want when you're out of combat. And it's for free. For instance, it's a, it's a quick way to swap from your raid build back to your DPS build if you need. Tip six, EQ2 has a bajillion abilities to use. How can you simplify it down to one button? Macros. Macros can help you with two big things. Say you got 30 combat abilities and you just want to spam one button, simplify it. You need a macro. So our guest for this video actually has an in-depth talk about how macros work and I'll leave a link for that in the description and comments. But in general, the order you put abilities in is how they're prioritized, is how they're used. What's confusing is the macros don't strictly run from start to end and then restart all over like you would expect them to. No, instead they run through by what's available. So if you do abilities one, two, three, four, and ability two just refreshed, you would do ability two first, not ability five. Hopefully I'm speaking English there. And the other confusing thing about macros is there's this little clicky that says primary on it. That doesn't mean you want to use this ability first whenever it's available. No, it's just a graphical indicator to show when that ability has refreshed on the outside. The other reason to use macros is for emergency abilities. Say you need to immediately stop casting a long nuke and do a quick heal instead. Normally, you'd have to finish casting the long nuke to then start casting the heal, and that can be fatal. You can make a macro with the first line being cancel spell cast, then put your ability after. And anytime you press it, it'll stop whatever you're doing and immediately cast the ability you want. You want to make this macro for reses, emergency heals, evacs, feign deaths, etc. Any immediate ability you want to go off. Tip 7. What should you buy from the game store? To play on progression servers, you have to have a membership. And a perk of membership is that you get $5 each month it renews. What should you buy with that? I think the four best things to buy are these. Option A. There's a shrink item that makes you a lot smaller. It's useful for everyone. It's a great way to lower the amount of screen space you take up so you can see the action better. It's great on raids. Just be sure to click this button in your options if you don't want to look like a stupid doll all the time. Option B, depots are storage containers you can place in your house that help with item clutter a lot. They can automatically take all the collectibles and trade skill items and other things out of your inventory and sort them for you. It's also the biggest storage space for those items. This is a thousand times better than having to manually micromanage everything in your bank and every bank slot. If you're going to get depots, I would prioritize the collectible and trade skill depots first, especially if you're doing overseer. You're going to get a lot of those items. Option C. For $1, you can buy a 50% EXP boost that lasts two hours. It's cheap enough that I don't worry about wasting it or hoarding it. I do not recommend using them for normal leveling though, especially on your first character. You will easily get to max level and then some by just doing your quest chains. It is not worth rushing through that in my opinion. That's the best part of the game. It's that grind all the way up to max level. but. What I would use experience potions for is trade skilling. There is no reason not to blow through trade skill levels. Just, just the same thing from one to max level. You won't miss out on anything but repetitive grind. And the last thing you should consider buying, this is the absolute best pay to win item that is on the store, the fast crafting potion. It turns a one minute craft into five seconds. You pop this with an experience potion and the levels will fly. There's one important detail though. The fast craft potion is not available to buy from the store. There's only one time you can purchase it. When your monthly subscription renews and you get the ability to claim your $5, a window will pop up with a limited offer and one of those options is the fast crafting potion. That is the only time you can buy it. It is not in the store. 
And now for tip number eight is a special guest. I really enjoy his videos. Bare necessities, explaining what the stats do and which stats do you want on your tanks and casters and melee. Let's go. Thanks for having me on, I am Blaze. Let's talk a little bit about stat priority for classes. Crit and potency are stats that are on every item and generally every class wants more of these. Same thing with primary stats and stamina, which both increase your effectiveness and HP respectively. When it comes to healers and mages, ability mod is king for both archetypes, followed by reuse and cast speed. The cap on ability mod was increased sometime during the Kaladin TLE server, making this stat insane for most classes. When it comes to scouts, it's a bit of a toss up. If you can get an immense amount of DPS mod and haste in your raid composition, running flurry and multi-attack may net you big gains, especially as a class like Swashbuckler who gets a lot of damage out of AoE auto attack. But generally, focusing on ability mod, reuse, and multi-attack will net you the most DPS if you aren't always overloaded with DPS mod and haste. However, when we think of other blue stats, each archetype has a different focus. Generally, tanks want to focus on max HP on every piece of gear if they can get it. After that, reuse is needed to keep those temps up as often as possible, followed by mitigation increase and block. Thank you, Bear, for the help there. His channel goes into depth about this game that no one else does. Thank you so much for what you do. If you like his content, please subscribe. Please try to support him. This EQ community is great, and I would love to see it keep going and thriving. Tip nine is optional settings and windows to make life easier. By default, people's titles and mounts will fill up your entire screen. Fortunately, you can hide mounts and titles in this section of the options. There's also two other windows that help with situational awareness. So typing in toggle threat list window brings up the target window and it shows everything that you're engaged to. And doing control T brings up a Diablo looking graphic that shows you the hate list. It shows you how much hate you have towards a mob. Very useful for DPSers to know when to cool it. And now for the last tip, tip number 10, being the most important, what are the best ways to level on progression servers like Barsoon? I would recommend against powering through levels because like I said earlier, you'll easily get to max level by just doing the quest chains. The zone quest chains are honestly the best part of the game. You get all geared up while fully exploring these beautiful zones and they can mostly be done solo or with one other person for help if you really need it. And once you finish these normal quests, every expansion has something called a signature quest line. That you're gonna need help with. You uncover the lore of that expansion and you go through the various dungeons and raids to eventually acquire one of the best items in game. So this is the prismatic timeline of vanilla. This is the peacock quest line of desert of flames. And this is the claymore quest line of kingdom of sky. Every expansion has a signature quest line. There's also heritage quests on the side, which can be long and grueling, but reward you with a powerful item. And generally it's a callback to an iconic item from the original EverQuest. And some of these rewards being best in slot. Now say you've already gotten max level on a main. You want to speed level alts. You'll probably want to run instances. Each expansion has private dungeons that you can power through to get great experience and gear. A lot of people like to pop experience potions and repeat the four to five instances per level range. But one thing to note is that the leveling population seems to fluctuate. It seems to be low most of the time outside of bonus experience holidays. Varsoon, despite it being the most populated server and easiest to catch up, most of the population is at level cap and raid log because it's been around for eight months as, as of this video. But hopefully with the third expansion, Echoes of Fade War, where it introduces quest chains all the way from one up to max level 70, I think we might see an influx of new players, hopefully. And a tip for max level, once you get there, you wanna turn off quest and adventure experience. Why? 
So if you put your cursor over here, it shows your vitality. It's an experience bonus that builds up when you're not leveling. Something like a 200% bonus to experience gain. When you're max level, you obviously can't gain experience anymore, but you can still consume your banked vitality. By turning off your quest and adventure experience, you won't consume vitality anymore because you want to save it. You want it to be full when you can start leveling again in the next expansion. But if you've watched this far, thank you so much for the support. Please go out there and support Bear Necessities for all the great help he does in this EQ2 community. See you in the next one.